in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit the lord be with you the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to john they said to one another who can this be even the wind and, and the sea those things obey him. To worship god and to love on him and this very church exists take this altar in its heart and eat so we can gather around for this is my body which will be given up for you
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our Mass today, too. And a warm welcome to anyone who might be visiting us today or here for the first time. The, the readings, are, it's called Good Shepherd Sunday. There's a clue to the readings. So it's about the Good Shepherd and it's also a day in which we pray for, pray for vocations. And we remember, we recall in this Mass that we're members of God's flock and that we matter to him. And that when we stray away from him, and we all do, then the Good Shepherd comes looking for us. As we gather together here today, we hear the voice of that Good Shepherd carrying us lovingly back into the fold. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the, Holy, filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter said, rulers of the people and elders, 
If you are questioning us today about an act of kindness to a cripple and asking us how he was healed, then I am glad to tell you all and would indeed be glad to tell the whole people of Israel that it was the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the one you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name and no other, that this man is able to stand up perfectly healthy here in your presence today. This is the stone rejected by you, the builders, but which has proven to be the keystone. For all, for of all the names in the world given to men, this is the only one which, the only one by which we can be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed we shall be like him because sh- because we shall see him as he really is the word of the lord
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is the one who lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd and the sheep do not belong to him, abandons the sheep and runs away as soon as he sees a wolf coming. And then the wolf attacks and scatters the sheep. This is because he, he is only a hired man and he has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for my sheep, and there are other sheep I have that are not of this fold, and these I have to lead as well. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be only one flock and one shepherd. The Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own free will, and it is in my power to lay it down. So it is in my power to take it up again. And this is the command I have been given from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Well done to uh, Cyprian and Aidan on those first two readings. That was really, really good. It's a lot for Bob to live up to, that was really, but Bob didn't do so badly either. Um, I heard um, there's a, a, a minister called um, Dr. Hamilton, and he tells this story, something happened in his life. He calls it the story of the two umbrellas, and he was walking on the beach one day, and he sees a bloke sitting on a bench reading his Bible, and this bloke looks like he's from another country. Anyway, he sees him reading the Bible. He goes over to chat to him and says, are you a Christian? He says, yeah, I am. He says, well, how, how did you come to be a Christian? Because this uh, guy was a minister himself. And so the Filipino guy says, well, I'll tell you what happened. He says, I came over here years ago to come to one of your universities. And on the first day I arrived, this other student came up to me. And um, he said, oh, you knew here yet? If there's anything I can do to make you welcome or to help you in any way, then just let me know. I'm around. He says, for example, he said, you don't, do you go to a church or anything? And the Filipino guy says, well, I, I used to go a little bit, but not so much now. He says, what church do you belong to? So he tells him, he says, I'll tell you what, I'll draw a map of where your church is because it's a bit tricky to find. And then you've got the map, and come Sunday, if you want to go, you can go there. He says, oh, that's really thoughtful of you. So he gives him the map. Sunday morning comes. He's in bed, and it's pouring with rain. We all know what that's like, don't we? Um, I've got to get up anyway, as you know. But um, say so things, so I won't bother. And then he hears a knock on the door, and he opens the door, and there's a student standing there holding two umbrellas. And uh, he says, look, I just thought that map wasn't that good, really. I thought maybe if you're going to go, I could show you the way. So he goes in to get changed. He thinks, what sort of bloke is this turning up at my door with two umbrellas? So as he's walking out, he asks him, he asks him about his life, about his faith. He says, what church do you belong to? He says, my church is just like around the corner there. So he says, well, this Sunday, why don't we both go to your church? And they did. But then he kept going to the same church every Sunday and decided then that he wanted to become a minister himself. And so he was ordained and became like a shepherd to his own flock. Now, for me, the interesting person in that story is the man with two umbrellas. Because he also was a shepherd in his own way, 
He brought that man back to the flock. And indeed, on this Good Shepherd Sunday, sometimes the focus is on a very narrow group of people, maybe like religious priests, uh, sisters, but perhaps also people who feel they've got a vocation in their teaching or, or medical care or whatever it is. But it's broader than that. I think the truth is that in some ways, all of us are called to do some shepherding. Now, we live in with Polesworth and Faisley, and the population is probably 100,000 people. One shepherd or two are going to do nothing. And yet every single one of those people matters to God. They're part of his flock. They're part of the people for whom he gave his life on the cross. And he wants them to be part of the fold. What we need in our town is a thousand shepherds. So my question this morning is this. Are you a person with one or two umbrellas? Do we go about our lives with our faith, just using it to protect ourselves from storms or really hot sunny days? Or do we feel called upon to bring others to the Lord as well? We are called. Whether we're working in an office, laying bricks, working in a factory, driving, we all have opportunities to bring the good news to others and maybe to bring others to the Good Shepherd. We are all being called. And maybe when all of us do some shepherding, out of that flock, more people might be more likely to hear the call to religious life or priesthood as well. Today, as we pray for vocations, we pray also for each of us for our own vocation too. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we have our bidding prayers. On this Vocation Sunday, we call on the Good Shepherd to look after his flock. that all new members of the church who receive the sacraments at Easter will be led to a lifelong commitment to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For vocations, that we will listen to what God is calling us to do with our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peace in the world, especially in the Middle East and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. that survivors of abuse will experience God's healing love and find the support that they need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
that those who died recently, especially Natalie Page, Mary Hackett, and Maureen Binfield, may be received into God's heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us ask Mary, the Holy Mother of God, to pray for us and, and with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In silence, we approach our loving Lord with our personal petitions. Father, send your Holy Spirit upon all who bear your name and seek to serve you with reverence. To you we make these our prayers, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, you are the good shepherd and we are your flock. Help us to know your voice and always follow you. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Today's Mass has been offered for Julie Morris and for Kit Liversidge and Joe Ironmonger. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Good Shepherd leads us to the Father, teaching us to pray in these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other a sign of peace. Well read. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
now we invite those bringing communion to the sick to please come forward. We ask God to bless these ministers of his, so that as they give the Eucharist to the housebound, they might be united with God in heaven and his church on earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well done again to our young readers. If any other young people would like to do a reading, then please get in touch with us. And we'll arrange for you to have a practice and, um, and get the readings in advance. So it is lovely to have our young people reading, though. Um, a new parishioner's evening is being planned. So if you're new to the parish in any way, coming back to church or you've moved in, please let us know. And then it's like a social evening to get you to meet other people as well. So let us know soon. Uh, just a firewalk. Last year, you know, we raised £24,000 with that firewalk, which is a huge amount of money. Um, so we're doing it again, maybe not expecting to raise so much, but it was great fun and easy to do. So have a think about it, or maybe ask someone from the family to do it. Um, if you're afraid of getting your feet burnt, well, you can always ask your children or grandchildren, but they won't get burnt either, because the thing is, it's quite safe. And I did it myself last year. And the great thing about it is it's a bit of a gimmick, but it attracts a bit of funding if you're on social media or whatever. So please have a think about doing it. And all that money goes towards helping people in need in the surrounding town. So it's, it's part of our responsibility as shepherds, really. And then the stuff on the summer fair there too, please, if you can help with that. So thank you for coming today. And... Um, have a blessed week ahead. We do thank all those who helped with gardening during the week. It was a great day on Wednesday. If anybody has any time this week, this Wednesday, we'd appreciate any help too. And that would be a sacred heart. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God come down upon you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Going in peace to serve and glorify the Lord in our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.